You might be thinking to yourself, we've deployed a vSAN cluster using the quick start method and using the manual method. But both of those required us to have vCenter in place before we start. What if this is a brand new data center or a brand new environment where we don't have vCenter? Do I need to deploy this to local storage, to third-party storage, to be able to build my vSAN cluster? And the answer is no. We can deploy a single vSAN node that has vCenter running on top of it. We're gonna walk through this entire process. To start off, I've already downloaded vCenter to my admin workstation, and I'm gonna launch our application. I'm gonna click on install. This will start our stage one process, which will deploy our vCenter server. There's a stage two process that does the rest of the configurations. For this video, we'll be skipping stage two, just to keep things a little bit shorter. I'm gonna click on the next button. I'll go and accept the EULA, and then I'll go and click on the next button. For step three, we need to put the information in for our first ESX IOS. This will be our very first node for our vSAN cluster. Once I click on next, it'll pop up a message saying, do you accept the certificate? In my case, I happen to have the node in maintenance mode. So first, to deploy vCenter, that host has to be out of maintenance mode. So I'm gonna go through the process of removing it and then clicking on next. Once we click on next, it'll pop up with that certificate warning again before we can continue on. That'll take us to step four. In step four, we need to specify the name that we want for our vCenter server. In this case, I'm gonna accept the defaults of VMware vCenter server and then put in our root credential information. I'll then go and click on next. For the deployment size, we can look at the chart at the bottom to figure out what matches our environment or what we think will match our environment. Because I'm using a lab environment, I'm gonna choose the tiny option. For the storage size, we've got default, large, and extra large. I'm gonna choose default, which is the smaller of the sizes, and then click on next. This is where we'll begin our vSAN configurations. If we did have any kind of third-party storage, whether it's VMFS or NFS, we would see those listed at the top. Because we're deploying our brand new vSAN cluster, I'm gonna click on the radio button at the bottom deploy a new vSAN cluster. We then can set our name for our data center and our cluster. If you have some kind of specific naming convention in your environment, go ahead and put them in now. For this video, we're just gonna set the defaults and click on next. For step seven, we can configure our disk groups. Each one of our vCN nodes supports a maximum of five disk groups. If you're unfamiliar with how they work or different types of failure scenarios, check out this video, we walk through all that information. For this wizard, it tries to do its best to pick out which disks for which tier, whether it's caching or capacity. For this video, I just wanna build one disk group on this host. So I need to change a couple of different options. I'm gonna click on one of our cache disks first. I'm then gonna claim it for capacity. This will tell it it's gonna be a capacity disk, not a cache disk. For a capacity tier, we're doing an all flash configuration. This wizard happened to identify it as a spinning disk. So I'm just gonna mark it as an all flash device. In your production environment, if you are hybrid though, make sure that your capacity tiers are marked as HDD. If they're not, we handle how we read data and write data differently from all flash to hybrid. Now that I've gone and fixed that, I'm gonna click on next. Next is our network configurations. If we know we wanna use a different port group than VM network, we can click on the dropdown and change over to this. This would be something we would create on the SXI host, not done through this installation process. And just to also mention, since we're building a brand new vCenter server, we don't have access to distributed switches at the moment. Once the installation is complete, we could create a distributed switch and migrate over to it. VMware stance is we recommend distributed switches if you have shared traffics. So for example, if I've got one distributed switch with VM traffic, vSAN traffic, vMotion traffic, management traffic, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, we would recommend distributed switches with network IO control. It also gives us the ability to manage our switches, our configurations essentially from vCenter. And that's something we could do afterwards. So jumping down to our FQDN, we wanna make sure we have a corresponding A record, a corresponding record in DNS. If we don't, we can open up DNS, then go to our forward lookup zone, right click and do new A record. I'll go ahead and put in vCenter and the IP address. We wanna make sure at the bottom, we've got that box checked to create a corresponding pointer record. This will translate from our IP address back to our FQDN. Let's go and switch back over to our installer. We now have the opportunity to review all the settings we put in place. I would encourage you just to double check those network configurations to make sure they are correct. A part of the stage one installation process, it'll try to reach out to vCenter to make sure it can talk to it. If it can't, we'll get an error message during that stage one installation. Once it's done, which took about 30 minutes in my lab environment, we can start the stage two configurations. Just keep this video a little bit shorter we're gonna skip the stage two installations. We're gonna jump ahead in time. We've already got vCenter deployed. 
The first thing I wanna do is add our other nodes. In this case, we're building a three node vSAN cluster. So I'm gonna add nodes two and nodes three. For the rest of this video, we're gonna be following through the same steps that we did during the manual installation process. So if you've already watched that and you're already familiar with the process, feel free to skip ahead to the next video. If you're not familiar with it, the first thing we're gonna be doing is creating our network configurations on host two and on host three. So I'm gonna click on host two first. We're gonna be creating a dedicated VM kernel port. We certainly can do it shared if that's what fits your environment. For this video, we're gonna be doing a dedicated one. And since we just deployed vCenter and I haven't deployed distributed switches yet, I'm gonna continue with the standard switch theme and choose a standard switch. In this case, vSwitch1. I'll then choose the next button. We'll give it a network name. I'm just gonna call it vSAN. I know it's super original. And at the bottom, check the box for vSAN. When it comes to MTUs, we support both standard frames and jumbo frames. Jumbo frames will give us a little bit better performance because we're increasing the payload. But if we choose to use jumbo frames, we have to make sure it's enabled end to end. So from our VM kernel port to our vSwitch or distributed switch to our physical switch, and then down the other side of the path to our other hosts. The entire chain or the entire path has to have jumbo frames enabled. For this video, we're gonna keep it nice and simple. We'll do our standard frames, our 1500 MTU, and then we're we'll gonna click on the next button. Next is our IP address information. We support both DHCP and static IP addresses. I prefer static IP addresses, but if you did want to use DHCP, we would just recommend a reservation. I'm going to click on the next button. We then can review our settings and click on the finish button. I'm going to rinse and repeat this process for host three. Next is our disk groups. We've already created our disk group on host one. We set the creator disk groups on host two. So I'm going to choose our vSAN cluster, click on configure, and then go down to disk management next. We can see we have one disk group created with one cache disk, which is our maximum for cache disks, and two for capacity disks. We need to create a disk group for host two and host three. So I'm gonna click on claim unused disks. The wizard tries its best to figure out which disks belong to which tier, whether that's cache or capacity. In my case, I'm gonna click on the dropdown and go ahead and manually specify it. One of the nice things about using the wizard is towards the right-hand side, it says one disk on two hosts. So it's gonna use the same configuration across both of our hosts. If we had 10 hosts, it would be that same configuration across 10 hosts. I'm gonna click on the create button. This process should take about 30 seconds to complete. Once it's done, we can see we've got one disk group on all three of our hosts. Our last step in this cluster is our Skyline health checks. To start out, I'm gonna take our host out of maintenance mode. When they're in maintenance mode, they're not contributing compute or storage resources to vSAN. I'm gonna go ahead and take them out before jumping to our Skyline health checks. To get to our Skyline health checks, I'll click on the cluster, click on monitor, and then go down to our Skyline health. For the Skyline health checks, we wanna take a top-down approach. Starting at that very first issue, and then working our way down. A lot of times when we fix that very first issue, it'll have a cascading effect on some of the other issues we are seeing in the environment. This happens to be a lab environment, a nested lab environment. So I am expecting to see some warning messages that you probably won't see in your production environment. So for example, this very first one, scudging controller is VMware certified. Just like a traditional SAN, we've got hardware and we've got controllers and drivers that are certified for vSAN. So we wanna make sure that we are seeing this in a green state and we are using equipment that is vSAN certified. In the right-hand window, we can see a list of which controllers are impacted. And this is true for all of our vSAN health checks. The right side will tell us which hosts or which services are impacted. If I'm looking for a little bit more information about this health check, I can click on the info tab. And then from there, if our workstation has internet connectivity, I can click on the ask VMware button to launch a KB article to get more information about it and possible resolutions. Once all the Skyline health checks are in a green state, you have a healthy vSAN cluster. And that's something to keep an eye on, whether that's tomorrow, a week, or a year from now, is making sure that all these health checks remain in a green state. And if they're not, figuring out why are they not in a green state. The only thing left to do at this point is to wrap up this video. We built a vSAN cluster from a single ES6i host. We went through the process of installing vCenter. We clicked the radio button and said, I want this to be a vSAN node. Once that process was done, we added two more hosts, did our network configurations, did our disk group configurations, and then wrapped up with our Skyline health checks. I hope you found this video informative. I'd like to thank you for watching.